The first case we have on our hands involves a car thief that is stealing cars all over Brooklyn. We have three suspects, the first of which is... Oh my god, Trudy Judy! The second suspect is... Doug Judy! And our last suspect... Say what's up, Dallas! What's up? Is Dallas. We want to find out whether our characters are innocent or guilty. We want to know whether Trudy is innocent. We want to know whether Doug is innocent. And we want to know whether Dallas is innocent. These statements are atomic propositions, which we represent by propositional letters, T, G and D. We want to find out if they logically follow from the information that we have, that is, if they are valid conclusions given our premises. At least one of them is guilty. This is our first premise. We translate this into propositional logic by expressing that either Trudy is guilty, or Doug is guilty, or Dallas is guilty. To make this a well-formed formula, we add some brackets. We are now going to find out in which situations this premise is true. We do this by means of a truth table. First, we write down all of the eight possible situations. For T, we take half true and half false. We then assign truth values to G in blocks of two and alternate between true and false for D. Now, we have all possible combinations laid out. With the truth values assigned to the atomic propositions, we can start calculating. First, not T, not G, and not D. We move on with not G or not D. And finally, the entire formula. We keep the evaluation of this premise aside and continue with the next. The second thing we know is that if Trudy is guilty, Dallas is also guilty. Translating this into propositional logic, if Trudy is guilty, then Dallas is guilty. But we also know that the same thing goes the other way around. If Dallas is guilty, then Trudy is guilty. Therefore, we can translate both of these premises into one formula using the by implication. We are now going to evaluate in which situations this premise is true. We assign truth values to the atomic propositions in the same order as we did with premise 1, so that they eventually form part of the same truth table. We then evaluate not T and not D. And finally, the full formula under the by implication, which is the main connective. We put the second premise aside next to the first one. The only other thing we know is that if Trudy is innocent, Doug is also innocent. Translating this into propositional logic, we know that if Trudy is innocent, then Doug is innocent. We now evaluate this formula in all situations. We assign truth values to the atomic propositions in the same order as before, and then evaluate the formula under the main connective. We have now evaluated all three premises for all possible situations. Again, the conclusions we want to test are T for Trudy is innocent, G for Doug is innocent, and D for Dallas is innocent. Since we are only interested in situations in which all the premises are true, we eliminate all the situations in which at least one of them is false. Can we now conclude whether our characters are innocent or guilty, having processed the information in our premises? We see that in every situation in which the premises are true, the statement Trudy is innocent is false. This means that the negation of the statement is always true. In other words, we can safely conclude that Trudy is guilty. The same goes for Dallas. For Doug, however, things are different. Given the information in the premises, he may be innocent or guilty. There is a counter-example for his innocence, but we also cannot conclude that he is guilty. It follows that more investigation is needed before this case is closed. What more can we conclude? Oh, fresh air. Well, I don't say that a lot. Now.
Watch for it. Is he alive? Mr. Body. Stand Body. back! Come here! Let me see. He's dead. What? Oh, who had the gun? I did. Then you shot him. I didn't. Well, you had the gun. If you didn't shoot him, who did? Indeed, who killed this man? Again, we have three suspects. May I present Professor Plum and Miss Scarlet? And this is Mrs. Peacock. We want to find out whether the following statements are true. We want to know whether Plum is innocent. We want to know whether Peacock is innocent. And we want to know whether Scarlet is innocent. These statements are atomic propositions which we represent by the propositional letters P, C and S. And these are the statements we are going to be evaluating at the end. At least one of them is guilty. This is our first premise. We translate this into propositional logic by expressing that either Plum is guilty, or Peacock is guilty, or Scarlet is guilty. To make this a well-formed formula, we add some brackets. We are now going to find out in which situations this premise is true. We do this by means of a truth table. First, we write down all of the eight possible situations. For P, we take half true and half false. We then assign truth values to C in blocks of two and alternate between true and false for S. We have all possible combinations laid out. With the truth values assigned to the atomic propositions, we can start calculating. First, not P, not C, and not S. We move on with not C or not S. And finally, the entire formula. We keep the evaluation of this premise aside and continue with the next. The second thing we know is that not all of them are guilty. We translate this into propositional logic by expressing that either Plum is innocent, or Peacock is innocent, or Scarlet is innocent. To make this a well-formed formula, we add some brackets. We are now going to evaluate in which situations this premise is true. We assign truth values to the atomic propositions in the same order as we did with premise 1, so that they eventually form part of the same truth table. We then evaluate C or S, and finally we do the entire formula. We keep the evaluation of this premise aside and continue with the next. Our third premise is that if Plum is guilty, Scarlet is guilty as well. Translating this into propositional logic, if Plum is guilty, then Scarlet is guilty. We now evaluate this formula in all situations. We assign truth values to the atomic propositions in the same order as before. First, we determine the truth values for not P and not S, and then evaluate the formula under the main connective. We keep this evaluation aside and go to the next and final premise. If Peacock is innocent, then Scarlet is innocent as well. We translate this into propositional logic. We now evaluate this formula in all situations. We assign truth values to the atomic propositions in the same order as before, and then evaluate the formula under the main connective. We have now evaluated all four premises for all possible situations. The conclusions we want to test are again P for Plum is innocent, C for Peacock is innocent, and S for Scarlet is innocent. Since we are only interested in situations in which all the premises are true, we eliminate all situations in which at least one of them is false. We see that in every situation in which the premises are true, the statement Plum is innocent is true. This means that this statement is always true. In other words, we can safely conclude that Plum is innocent. Also, in every situation in which the premises are true, the statement Peacock is innocent is false. Therefore, we can conclude that Peacock is guilty. Scarlet, however, given the information in the premises, may be innocent or guilty. There is a counter-example for her innocence. But we also cannot conclude that she's guilty. More investigation is thus needed before the case can be closed. What more can we conclude? <gasps> A young girl named Teresa Banks has died. 
Again, we have three suspects. Our first suspect is Philip, who used to be an FBI agent before he suddenly and mysteriously disappeared. Our second suspect is Teresa's boss from the cafe she worked at. Her name is Irene. Our last suspect is Bob, who we first see when he is hiding in a young girl's room. We want to find out whether the following statements are true. We want to know whether Philip is innocent. We want to know whether Irene is innocent. And we want to know whether Bob is innocent. These statements are atomic propositions which we represent by the propositional letters P, I and B. And these are the statements we are going to be evaluating at the end. At least two of them are guilty. That is our first premise. We translate this into propositional logic by expressing that either two of them are guilty, Philip and Irene, Irene and Bob, or Philip and Bob, or all three of them are. We'll see a more elegant way to express this when we study predicate logic. To make this formula well-formed, we add some brackets. We are now going to find out in which situations this premise is true. We do this by means of a truth table. First, we write down all of the eight possible situations. For P, we take half true and half false. We then assign truth values to I in blocks of two and alternate between true and false for B. Now, we have all possible combinations laid out. With the truth values assigned to the atomic propositions, we can start calculating. First, not P, not I, and not B. We move on with the first conjunction, which appears twice. The second conjunction, the third, and the last one. Then we evaluate the first disjunction, followed by the last disjunction. And finally, we are in a position to evaluate the whole formula. The second thing we know is that not all of them are guilty. We translate this into propositional logic by expressing that either Philip is innocent, or Irene is innocent, or Bob is innocent. To make this a well-formed formula, we add some brackets. We are now going to evaluate in which situations this premise is true. We assign truth values to the atomic propositions in the same order as we did with premise 1, so that they eventually form part of the same truth table. We then evaluate I or B, and finally the entire formula. We keep the evaluation of this premise aside and continue with the next. The next and final premise is if Irene is guilty, Philip is innocent. Translating this into propositional logic, we know that if Irene is guilty, Philip is innocent. We now evaluate this formula in all situations. We assign truth values to the atomic propositions in the same order as before. We now evaluate not I and then evaluate the formula under the main connective. We have now evaluated all three premises for all possible situations. The conclusions we want to test are again P for Philip is innocent, I for Irene is innocent, and B for Bob is innocent. Since we are only interested in situations in which all the premises are true, we eliminate all situations in which at least one of them is false. We see that in every situation in which the premises are true, the statement, Bob is innocent, is false. This means that this statement is always false. In other words, its negation is always true and we can safely conclude that Bob is guilty. Irene and Philip, however, given the information in the premises, may be innocent or guilty. There is a counterexample for their innocence. But we can also not conclude that they're guilty. More investigation is thus needed before it is closed. What more can we conclude?